Okay, great. Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Roy. It's now uh, 13 minutes past uh, 3 a.m. here in Israel. Uh, I'm excited uh, uh, to get the opportunity to uh, uh, meet you guys and speak uh, with everyone. I really am uh, starstruck. Um, this is uh, really meant to be a conversation, not just a one-sided thing, so please interrupt me. Um, my current laptop is uh, not the, the best of a setup, so I won't be able to monitor chat uh, really uh, effectively myself. So feel free to turn on the microphones and uh, just uh, interrupt me. And if uh, uh, Jason Scott, you can assist with uh, uh, like mediating chat, it'll also be uh, great. Um, so uh, on to, uh, let's dive into the topic. So <clears throat> basically, you know, uh, uh, concepts, one of the largest features of uh, C++ uh, 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 20 that's come in. And uh, I'll try and, and talk a little bit about uh, uh, why, when, our concepts good. When uh, what alternatives do we have uh, for using concepts, uh, even from before uh, C++ uh, at 20 and uh, uh, or sorry C++ 17 and uh, what uh, uh, 20 and what uh, uh, what can we uh, perhaps uh, uh, learn and, and how we might want to use uh, concepts and other uh, mechanisms as we write uh, libraries for other people to use. Um, so let's. Uh, uh, start by a little bit of an introduction uh, from uh, uh, around six years ago. Uh, this is a short clip from uh, a course uh, by uh, Alexander Stepanov. Uh, it's a long course that he's, he's been having, he had on A9. And uh, we can see how even in uh, 2014, uh, there were uh, discussions and there were uh, thoughts about concepts. So let's uh, see what uh, Stepanov and his uh, colleague has to say. Okay, so we have a whole bunch of uh, concepts that we've used in all of our code, and these all defines to type name. Right? This is just documentation today. Maybe at some point there will be a way in the language to express this, but but today that's two the years. way it is. Okay, so we can see that uh, even in 2014 there was uh, not, nothing in the language for concepts, but uh, library authors did uh, already have this in mind, and uh, when they were writing their own libraries. They just had defines for the word type name into concepts uh, that they were using in their libraries, uh, just uh, in order to make their code more uh, readable, to reason about their libraries, even before the language gave any, uh, any, uh, I guess, way to, anything to, uh, uh, to use it. Okay, so uh, uh, let's uh, uh, move on a little bit. Uh, even uh, a year earlier into 2013, the same course, but now, uh, visiting a lecture uh, uh, by Baron Strasstrup, and he also uh, tried to tell uh, the people in the course what concepts are, dive a little deeper about uh, exactly uh, uh, when to use them and what their importance is. Um, concepts are fundamental. They're, they're meant to have uh, represent a fundamental concept in the application area. Uh, Alex has been saying this for at least 15 years, but most people haven't gotten it. Okay, so Charles Schoff himself tells us uh, that concepts are fundamental, really important piece of the language. It's uh, only now uh, uh, coming in uh, uh, for us uh, to use, uh, uh, like, all, like in, 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 you know, with, with the full standardization, but, uh, but uh, it, it has been in the works for a long, long time. And uh, I'll try in this talk to, talk to dive a little bit into it and see what's so important about it so we can get a, a better sense. So, to start off, uh, concepts are obviously deeply related to template metaprogramming. I think uh, this crowd uh, knows quite a lot about it, so we can uh, go through this uh, quickly. And this is like uh, this one of the simplest examples of uh, a template metaprogramming, just uh, um, an algorithm that uh, can be written uh, once as a template, um, or this is not even metaprogramming, this is just templates, right? Uh, I want to write an algorithm that, and uh, have it uh, be implemented for many, many types. Um, this is min algorithm, you know, just whatever type you have, as long as uh, we can uh, uh, know uh, how to uh, how to compare an, an object of type T to another one, we can typically find the minimum one. And the metaprogramming lets us uh, also uh, reason and, and try to uh, alt have, have a, maybe a different implementation for the same algorithm uh, based on uh, the, the different uh, traits or the different uh, object that, that we uh, want to work on. So uh, again, uh, the swap uh, algorithm, relatively simple. And uh, here we can see 
um, that in SEL we have uh, like a specialization and different uh, implementation for uh, an array versus a, uh, versus a non-array uh, type to allow us uh, to allow swap to have uh, deep copy semantics for arrays, whereas uh, uh, other uh, other objects can be copied uh, regardless. And if if we didn't have this uh, second uh, second uh, specialization, it was uh, it would uh, have been either impossible to uh, to swap arrays or uh, in in some weird cases you could reach case reach uh, situations where you wanted to swap arrays and in, and you would uh, swap uh, maybe pointers instead of the arrays or like do a, like a shallow copy instead of a deep copy and so specialization and the various uh, meta programming tricks help us uh, really define the exact semantics and the exact uh, algorithm we want to do uh, for different uh, types uh, that we work with. Um, okay, so um, as there, there are cases also where we would uh, use metaprogramming tricks not uh, to, uh, um, to implement uh, or to perform a different algorithm, just to perform the same algorithm, but uh, guide our compiler or uh, into a better uh, behavior, better runtime performance or, or otherwise. Um, in this example here, uh, there's the STL implementer um, wanted to uh, basically have an implementation of the STD fill algorithm that just goes and fills a container with the same uh, element over and over again. And uh, in this case, uh, the STL implementer decided to force the compiler um, to use memset in case uh, uh, the objects uh, or the container that is uh, being filled is, uh, is uh, I guess, uh, just an array of, uh, of bytes. Okay, so. Uh, obviously, if uh, we didn't have this uh, specific uh, metaprogramming trick, uh, the compiler could have chosen to uh, uh, implement the uh, STD fill uh, or the loop as a memset, but here, um, metaprogramming trick is, is used to basically force the compiler to do a memset in this uh, specific uh, case. Okay, so this was a short introduction of what concepts are and also what metaprogramming is. and. Uh, Throughout this talk, I'll try to uh, um, talk a little bit deeper about uh, how do we uh, put constraints on templates? How do we uh, write, you know, different algorithms that uh, try to uh, achieve the same uh, the same goal and uh, uh, and help the compiler or choose the best uh, alternative uh, to use? I'll obviously uh, uh, look at it from the C plus plus twenty concepts uh, perspective, and uh, but but also try to see what other approaches are. I'll tell you a little bit of what I think of, of the various uh, alternatives. I'll be happy to hear your uh, ideas. And uh, I'll try to, uh, uh, I guess, spice things up with uh, some uh, YouTube videos from uh, code, uh, uh, code examples from the STL. Uh, so, and obviously when I'll, I'll say many things, some of them might but just be my opinion. Feel free to, uh, to challenge my thoughts. Um, so let's get back to uh, uh, 2013 to uh, Strasbourg and learn a little bit uh, deeper what uh, concepts are, um, not just uh, the fact that they're important, but uh, how, how do we uh, look at them and how do we use them? So what are concepts for structure? And the thing we were working on is it becomes a bunch of constant expressions. It becomes a bunch of Boolean expressions. Does this type have this property? Does the argument type has this property? Has the combination of types we get as arguments got this property? It's all predicates. It's all Boolean algebra. Um, there's nothing about scopes, nothing about objects, nothing about uh, indirect jump tables. It's all Boolean expressions. Okay, so the first fundamental thing about concepts is that they aren't really uh, too complicated to think about. It's just Boolean expressions over uh, uh, types, um, maybe not just uh, over a single type, it can be over like a combination of several types, but it's just Boolean expressions, nothing uh, uh, too uh, uh, fancy. That's uh, when you think of concepts, that's what you need to think about. And uh, where are they used? What, what's their uh, best uh, or most common use? Um, that's, uh, uh, we'll hear it from Strasso, but it has to do with uh, uh, overloading. Let's uh, hear him. You can overload if it meets the sets of constraints from one and not the other. That's the story. If it meets, if they are subsets of each other, then it'll take the one you, uh, the, the biggest one it can. In, in, in other words, if you, most specific. most specific, well, 
the one that ha the, that meets the the largest number of the predicates. Okay, great. So uh, um, we have uh, those Boolean expressions, and we can uh, basically see uh, which type uh, or which concept uh, satisfies uh, uh, with, with the most uh, uh, number of, uh, of Boolean expressions. And uh, uh, the compiler we use the, that uh, mechanism in order to rank and choose uh, uh, which of an overload, which uh, overload of a set uh, is best uh, used in which uh, uh, situation on, on which circumstances. So again, quite simple. Let's leave uh, uh, Strasser alone and uh, I'll share with you uh, like a third uh, fundamental uh, thing about concepts. This is the first. These are the first few few paragraphs from cppreference.com talking about the concepts library and concepts in general for C++ 20. And uh, I won't read all of it uh, right now, but I do want to uh, highlight uh, the fact that uh, uh, concepts fundamentally are not just uh, a syntactic uh, uh, notion, but also uh, has uh, uh, a lot of semantics around them. And whenever we think about uh, concepts, we need to uh, know and learn both their syntactic and their semantic uh, aspects. And uh, we can also uh, see and always remember that if uh, uh, we try and use a concept that uh, works syntactically, but uh, uh, doesn't meet the semantic requirements, it's basically unbe undefined behavior. So no, all bets are off. Uh, so semantics are also important, although the language itself uh, sometimes focuses on the syntax. So um, this is basically, uh, from my perspective, concepts um, in, in a single slide. It's a bunch of Boolean expressions. Uh, we take the overload that meets the largest number of predicates. And uh, when we, whenever we work with concepts, we need to remember it's, it's syntax, but also semantics. So I guess uh, throughout the, the rest of the talk, we'll just dive deep into these uh, three bullets and try to look at the uh, like specific uh, details or intricacies of, of those three, um, this might be a good uh, uh, time to stop and look at the uh, at questions because I see that there are quite a few uh, um, things in the chat room. Um, so I don't know, let's uh, see if, if, if anyone wants to have a comment. There's, uh, there's a lot of chat, but I don't think there's a real question in there. Yeah, it's a lot of discussion around what you've talked about so far. And I do tangentially related to that. Yeah, uh, I have a couple of questions. You said that it matches the greatest number of expressions. Uh, the one that has the most matches is the, is the overload that's chosen. Does that somehow imply that we should keep our requires expressions small so that that's more granularity so the compiler can actually determine which one has the most expressions uh, matched? Yeah. Okay, so it's tricky stuff, and the rules I think have been, uh, you know, refined uh, over time from from what they were seven years ago. Basically, okay. as, as far as I remember, uh, there's the notion of, uh, um, I guess, uh, uh, CNF and uh, like a conjunctive normal form, and and and, and this conjunctive normal form, basically, uh, yeah, the compiler will try to uh, break down a concept, uh, like even if it's uh, recursively defined with other concepts, into like. Uh, uh, like a set, like a Boolean expression of uh, as, as atomic I as items as atomic as possible, and try to see if uh, two uh, concepts that are maybe in competition with each other are subsets of one another. And if they are, it will take uh, the one that that, the, that is the superset that, that that is met. Um, okay. I think actually I have seen uh, some uh, some talk, maybe even on this meetup uh, by uh, Ben Dean, about uh, the, the ex some of the intricacies in here, in there, and the fact that. Uh, for that reason, you might want to uh, expose uh, the Boolean expressions as uh, really part of the part of the uh, concept itself, and not uh, hide it inside the like the requires clause. Um, so okay. it's a little tricky, but uh, but yeah, you, you if you know that uh, different concepts might be in competition with each other, you, you, you might as well you're better off really exposing it to the compiler and having one uh, like be like an like an and a Boolean expression over the other one. So the compiler, so it's easy. So you make sure that uh, one is truly a superset of the other. So. It almost sounds like there's room for unspecified behavior here where quality of implementation, one of them is able to break down the expressions better than the other one or something. And it's, am I missing, misinterpreting that? Yeah, I think uh, like the, the pure mathematical definition of uh, like CNF and DNF is, uh, is should be sound. So compilers okay. should, uh, uh, it should, compilers shouldn't have a problem reaching the same uh, resolution, as far as I know. 
Okay, um, thank you. I have a, a related question related to that since you mentioned CNF. So it's not doing like a, a, satisfac a satisfiability problem now, is it? Like, um, are these concepts, are they trying to, are, is the process like trying to break, break uh, uh, of compiling them, breaking up these concepts down to disjoint sets and then doing some sort of composition? And if so, how does that affect, you know, the overall compilation time of, you know, maybe a sufficiently large code base with a, a significant number of concepts? Yeah, so, yeah, we, there is no attempt uh, to, uh, yeah, to, to solve, uh, uh, like, the SAT, pro the SAT problem, which is MP hard. Usually, right. uh, when, you know, when the compiler tries to, uh, to see if a specific algorithm or a specific uh, um, a class uh, matches or can be instantiated with a specific uh, uh, class or classes, uh, it, it already uh, knows uh, what, you know, how to, uh, I guess, uh, assign the, the Boolean expressions. There's no need to look for, for an assignment. So it already can, can look at all the concepts and see which ones are true and which ones are false. And assuming that the, uh, a specific uh, instantiation or, or a specific uh, like class that you want to uh, run an algorithm with, um, you know, can match uh, several, uh, or like has a true uh, uh, expression for, for several of the concepts, um, then all the compiler needs to do is just check whether one is in a superset of the other. And that's uh, much simpler than, uh, than NP uh, hard. So okay, I just, I just want to make sure it sounded, it sounded like it was going in one direction. And that was just yeah. a, a confusion of mine. Thanks for the clarification. Sure. Okay, so let's uh, uh, dive into the first bullet, uh, a bunch of Boolean expressions. So a bunch of Boolean expressions, obviously quite simple. Um, uh, and you know, basically, you, you know, you start off by saying that uh, um, you know that you can define any concept as a Boolean expression. So, is integral v is a type trait, uh, uh, or is integral existed uh, uh, for many many years in the C++? I think uh, even before C++ 11, and uh, we can take any such a, a Boolean expression over type and uh, just uh, define a concept to be uh, equal to that. That's the simplest way to define a concept. Um, we can go uh, and to a, another level of, uh, of complexity by using uh, Boolean expressions like in here, and uh, we can define uh, the assigned integral uh, concept as just a, a Boolean expression over maybe another concept and uh, some, some more Booleans. You can go uh, a while with uh, uh, you know, Boolean uh, operators uh, as much as you like. There have been some discussions about the fact that uh, you know, the end operator many times is more, makes more sense than the OR operator for, for concepts, but still you can do whatever you like. And uh, the third and maybe uh, most uh, uh, interesting way uh, to uh, define the concepts is using uh, uh, requires clauses um, or is it requires expressions? I think requires clauses uh, where you can basically uh, just write a, a piece of code uh, and using the, the types that the concept uh, relates to. And if the code uh, compiles and uh, meets uh, various uh, conditions, that means that the concept will be uh, true. If the code doesn't compile, or, or doesn't meet the conditions, then uh, uh, the concept will be false, but it won't generate a comp compilation error. This is like a, a Sphene friendly type of a, of a thing. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm not going to, I assume uh, most of you have, have, heard, have seen this uh, before. So this is the bas basic way uh, to, to create a concept and to basically map Boolean uh, uh, predicates and Boolean uh, values into uh, concepts. This is all very good and nice, but uh, in fact, uh, all of these three uh, things uh, had, we had ways to uh, to do them uh, even before uh, concepts and before C plus twenty. Um, so obviously, as, as I we seen before, just uh, having a simple uh, Boolean expression uh, has been possible uh, before. Type traits are a very good example. Here we can see that uh, you know we can define a, a, a Boolean constant uh, and and, uh, and true type and false type, and using that we can uh, just uh, um, we can we can define a different uh, Predicates on the types. Another uh, uh, way to uh, to convert uh, types to to booleans is using a uh, const x per boolean uh, variables. You can also you have const x per uh, boolean functions, and all of them are basically ways uh, uh, that we had even uh, before C plus twenty to map uh, uh, types and even relationships of types or combinations of types into uh, boolean expressions into true and false. And uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, combining various other uh, uh, predicates 
in using a Boolean algebra and Boolean operators is also something that was uh, uh, possible even before. And so in this example, it's scalar. Uh, it's just a Boolean expression over uh, some other type traits. This, this was all possible and all uh, achievable even before uh, uh, concepts were around. Um, and uh, even if we look at the, the third and most interesting uh, requires clause, uh, uh, this was also something that uh, actually uh, was possible, although much, much uh, uglier uh, than, uh, than, than it is now. It was also possible, and this is like a, uh, an example of using a sphene for, uh, in order to uh, do something that's similar to a requires clause. This uh, has meow uh, trait is a trait that there will be uh, false for uh, everything except uh, for the case where, uh, where a type T has a method called the uh, meow. Okay, so if a type T has a method called meow, then uh, uh, has meow is specialized uh, uh, to be a, a true type, otherwise it's false type. And uh, this is uh, you know, uh, an, a poor man's or uh, an older uh, way to do things that are very, very similar to uh, uh, what we can do now and uh, more easily with requires. So uh, basically uh, concepts are really, really nice, but uh, a lot of the power that they have has already uh, been at our disposal even before C++20. Um, and uh, a, a part of that, a part of all these uh, uh, things and uh, like the parallels that we have for concepts, there are also some old uh, uh, things for mapping uh, booleans uh, or classes into booleans that uh, uh, don't really have a, a, a direct mapping into concepts. First and foremost, it's specialization. Okay, so specialization is a way that existed or exists for, for templates. I can uh, again uh, define a uh, is const to be false for everything and then specialize for true types. And uh, interestingly enough, um, concepts cannot be specialized. And uh, another um, you know, thing that, that relates to it is uh, the fact that uh, um, we can use specialization for a uh, opt-in and opt-out, uh, um, where uh, a library can, for example, like here, can define uh, some uh, Boolean to be false across uh, uh, like the entire uh, uh, universe of, of all classes and let uh, the user of a library specialize if, uh, this uh, Boolean for their own uh, uh, class and uh, turn it into a uh, true or false and do this sort of like an opt-in or opt-out from specific uh, features when it relates to specific uh, objects that they do. Okay, so uh, concepts cannot be specialized uh, by themselves. I, I'm not sure, but I believe that uh, uh, everything uh, that uh, starts with the word the template class T in C++ used to be, uh, it used to be okay to, to specialize it uh, in terms of the language uh, until concepts came in. And concepts, uh, it's not possible to, uh, to do specialization on concept itself. Uh, one could argue that it's not uh, too uh, important or too uh, uh, too much of a hassle because if I define a concept as uh, equals to uh, some other uh, template uh, uh, object, like a template uh, const expert uh, variable or concept uh, function, then I can specialize that and uh, through and through that specialization, uh, basically control the concept that uh, I want to, uh, to to maybe change or opt into or specialize. Okay, so. That's, uh, uh, so specialization is the one, I think, uh, strange thing that uh, was possible uh, or is possible for non-concepts, but isn't directly uh, applied to concepts. Um, and then last thing uh, uh, that uh, is sort of like adjacent, but still uh, might be worth uh, talking about is uh, things like uh, traits that are not just uh, type traits or, or maybe more a little more uh, uh, nuanced, uh, such as uh, numeric limits. The numeric limits uh, uh, basically is a struct that has uh, many, many uh, uh, members. Some are uh, uh, Boolean, others are, are, are non-Boolean. And uh, uh, again, the standard allows uh, uh, anyone who wants to, to uh, specialize the numeric limits on their own classes. Um, and, and, and assuming that uh, they do it uh, in a way that is uh, semantically correct, then it's, uh, it's totally allowed and legal. And again, for concepts, uh, it's, it's not something that uh, the standard allows to do. So that was uh, like a very quick uh, overview of uh, the first uh, uh, section, uh, just a way of uh, talking about uh, Boolean expressions, how we used to do it and how we can do it there right now. Uh, any uh, questions or comments on that? Okay, let's, uh, let's um, move ahead into uh, uh, this, the, the deeper uh, part of uh, how do we uh, help, uh, help the compiler help us 
and choosing the best uh, alternative of an overload set. So, uh, to, to, first of all, to, to give you a little bit of, uh, of a background, I should say that uh, this uh, notion of uh, uh, choosing between an overload set is, in my opinion, a really uh, important part of uh, the communication between a library and an application. Okay, whenever uh, an application uh, uses a library and uh, has uh, like an API that needs to be used, there's risk of, uh, of errors due to incorrect expectations. Uh, the library has some uh, preconditions, both conditions, some assumptions about uh, how the applications might uh, want to use uh, the library. And uh, uh, the, all the mechanisms uh, around the strong typing, around the uh, um, constraints, and, and around the, uh, and, and these uh, types of, uh, of, of capabilities are mainly uh, here to, to assist us and to make sure that uh, uh, as much as possible during a uh, compilation time even, um, we won't uh, make mistakes or the application writer will understand or will know if it's suitable or not suitable for them to use uh, the library with uh, their classes and with their use cases that they want. Um, and obviously, whenever different uh, components are developed by different people, um, this can be an issue. And so in libraries is just a, a, a common example. And uh, so as I mentioned, uh, uh, overload resolution is one way to try and verify the expectations. And in some cases, overload resolution will just uh, be, be in, like an, a Boolean uh, in or out or uh, allowed or disallowed, where we just uh, want the compiler to just give uh, uh, the user an error if they try to use our library uh, in a setting that, that doesn't make sense. In other, ways, in other places, it's a more granular thing where we want uh, the application to basically control our library or give our library some hints as to how to uh, uh, how to uh, act uh, for the different uh, types. Um, okay, uh, I should also say that some of the resolution mechanisms uh, are deliberately uh, made such that uh, they can be bypassed. So if the application uh, a writer knows something that uh, we don't know as a library, we can a writer they can uh, bypass our uh, resolution mechanisms and uh, try to force their way in. And uh, in other cases, it's less uh, negotiable. And I'll go over examples uh, in the next few slides. So uh, first and foremost, uh, uh, concepts. Um, so the, the way that we uh, constrain things with concepts is using the requires clause. Um, there are various uh, syntax alternatives on, on how, to, uh, how to do the constraining itself. It's, you either write the requires clause right after uh, the, you know, the template declaration, or you can uh, do it uh, inside the template declaration, just uh, instead of type name, write the name of a concept. And you can also use the, the auto in the name of a concept. As, as like the, the variable type. Um, and as uh, mentioned by Strauss group, uh, we'll choose uh, uh, the, mo the most specialized version uh, in case there are several uh, alternatives that uh, are, are possible. Uh, as you mentioned, this is a, a spin A friendly. So uh, in case uh, a concept that doesn't match, it, doesn't, it shouldn't cause uh, any uh, compilation error. And the messages uh, for, uh, uh, in case uh, nothing matches, are much uh, clearer than uh, they used to be with spin A. Compilation speeds are, are faster than they, they used to be. And that, those, I think, are the main, uh, some of the main selling points of using concepts compared to uh, other older alternatives. And uh, uh, to, to a large extent, uh, um, the, the, this, the, the contract uh, between the library and the application is defined by the library itself. The library defines which concepts uh, it, it uh, wants to, uh, to work with, uh, what are their what are the rules and the application must uh, basically conform to the to the concept the application has to uh, you know meet all the requirements that the library uh, defines there's no way for the application to go around it and just uh, try its luck uh, so to speak um, and let's uh, uh, go uh, uh, to a short video uh, discussing uh, like one of the top alternatives to uh, requires uh, that uh, used to exist before uh, C20 uh, so here's a uh, Timor from uh, CUP con just uh, uh, four months ago or five months ago. Let's remember if we, um, let's see if we can remember how to um, how to use std enable if. Okay, so you can write the std enable if uh, integral type and floating point type. Where do we put this? This is something that I can, I can never remember, right? So you can put this onto the return type of the function, but then you don't really see the actual return type anymore, so that's not great. You can put this into the parameter list, but then you don't really see the parameter list anymore. So I don't like either of these. Um, so my favorite method is actually to put this into the template argument list, because then you can still cleanly see the function signature. Um, 
So that's, I think, the most readable way of doing this, except it doesn't work. Um, because it turns out that uh, in C++, defaulted uh, template arguments are not part of the function signature. And then you again have the same function signature twice, and then you again get this error redefinition of function template. Turns out you can work around that because that rule doesn't apply to non-type template parameters, so you can make this an int uh, template parameter. Okay, so this is a rather long video. The specific details aren't really important. The main thing is that it, it's complex, right? Before we had the concepts, there are many, many different ways uh, or various ways and various, uh, I guess, idioms of how to uh, add uh, uh, these uh, clauses or these constraints to uh, to our functions and uh, the different ways that uh, were, you know, suitable for some cases, but not for others. Some were more readable, some were less readable. And uh, it was just a pain uh, that the uh, concepts uh, and requires clauses uh, made it, uh, are meant to make uh, uh, our lives easier with, okay? Um, a part of that, a part of this enable if uh, mechanism that uh, was really um, uh, replaced to a large extent uh, with requires clauses, there were more alternatives uh, that they were used before we had concepts, which again, don't map uh, directly uh, to, uh, to what we have right now. So first of all, uh, as I mentioned uh, even before, there's specialization, okay? So specialization, um, basically, especially when we talk about a uh, partial specialization, uh, it, it was a way uh, without uh, uh, using uh, constraints per se to again implement uh, different uh, types of uh, uh, or, or different uh, implementations for the same algorithm. And again, the compiler would know how to choose the best one. We know how to to choose uh, um, which uh, specialization is the most uh, specialized with various rules and uh, to get uh, the correct uh, implementation for us. Um, another way of uh, you know the library. Um, Communicating with uh, with application code was using uh, some uh, customization argument like uh, the comparator argument for max element, for example. Okay, so this is much. This is not a, a, as clean of uh, of a method as or as clean of a, uh, of an approach as uh, a specialization or as concepts because, because it actually combines a little bit of a, a compile time as well as a little bit of a, a, a runtime, but it, it gives a uh, anyway, it gives the uh, whoever uses my library a way to interact with my library to, to basically plug in some logic, some code uh, into uh, my algorithm, and that can be uh, that is known both at compile time and can also be uh, uh, you know consulted with at runtime. Um, another uh, interesting uh, uh, thing about this approach is that uh, it allows uh, in, to, it allows the callers or the applications to override and use the same uh, algorithm. Uh, with different uh, uh, configurations uh, on on the on different call sites. So, for example, if uh, uh, my uh, uh, I have a container that contains, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, records of, of of personnel of people, I want to uh, find the max element uh, by uh, like sorting by uh, either the first name or the last name uh, or whatever uh, sort uh, algorithm that I want. I can basically uh, uh, use max element uh, and, and, and at the call site. Uh, call it several times with different comparators and it will work. This is much stronger and much more flexible than uh, um, using requires clauses where basically I, I, I have to, uh, uh, you know, I have to just specify for my person type what, uh, uh, what, what's my comparison uh, uh, method and, and, and be stuck with that. So that's uh, like one of the like a strong point of uh, using a customization argument. It, it allows uh, the library and the application to uh, basically Use uh, each other in with, in different uh, with different settings and on different call sites. It's not there's no hard binding between the library algorithm and the uh, application uh, um, objects or application uh, classes that are used uh, for the algorithm. Um, yeah, sorry. Uh, so and then uh, the one last uh, alternative uh, uh, or that, that uh, can be discussed is really much more uh, uh, complicated than the rest, but. Uh, it can be very, very powerful is the customization points, also known as the Nibloids or Tag Invoke, where again, uh, I can uh, um, uh, connect uh, my algorithms with the user code and, uh, uh, and configure uh, exactly uh, uh, you know, the, the relationship or let, uh, let user code uh, interact uh, with my algorithm. Uh, this is a really uh, a longer topic uh, that, that I can uh, discuss deeply uh, here right now, but uh, if you like, uh, uh, this link uh, is uh, you can 
point you to a talk, I think from some uh, uh, from people uh, on, on the Facebook team that uh, have used this, uh, this method quite a lot. Um, and then um, another uh, way to, uh, to configure or to work with, uh, uh, to let the libraries and application code, uh, uh, I guess, interact with each other is uh, uh, the, the, the way that the STL works uh, classically, which is the tag dispatch. I assume uh, some of you know uh, tag dispatch as well. And uh, here's the basic uh, way that it works. It's by using uh, 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 categories or by basically asking the, the application to, uh, to tell us the, a little bit uh, of information about their classes by, uh, def by breaking the world into different uh, uh, categories or different uh, uh, you know, sets of behaviors. So th this example is uh, the STL advanced uh, algorithm. Um, <clears throat> this is a very basic algorithm. It tries to uh, take uh, an iterator and move it n steps forward. And uh, you can see that the implementation basically um, <clears throat> you calls an underscore underscore advance and passes an extra argument, which is the iterator category uh, of uh, the iterator type that I uh, accept. The STL defines several iterator categories, you know, a forward iterator, man the maxis iterator, bidirectional, et cetera. And uh, based on the uh, category uh, that they work with, advance uh, or the underscore underscore advance can be specifically implemented to be uh, to get the best uh, performance and the best uh, 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 suitable algorithm for the task. Um, we can see, by the way, that uh, in STL, this uh, dispatch uh, method is, is hidden. Okay, it's only it only exists inside the underscore underscore advanced method. With the, uh, users cannot call themselves, and the users uh, have to uh, um, trust, I guess, or uh, to, to put their trust in STL and in their uh, iterators that they uh, that they know. Uh, their categories uh, uh, correctly. If uh, one uh, has a, a random access iterator and for some reason wants to uh, perform the advanced algorithm as if it was uh, um, like a, a bidirectional or a forward iterator, the STL doesn't really allow it. Uh, although, in, in fact, it, it can be, uh, uh, it, it's possible technically because we know that a random access iterator is also a, a forward iterator. And there can be some cases where it might actually be beneficial. Um, I don't know if you've uh, uh, seen uh, maybe some old uh, uh, talks by uh, Alex Andrescu, uh, where he discusses uh, the various uh, sorting algorithms. And he, can, uh, uh, he says that uh, although the uh, worst case uh, algorithmic uh, complexity of, uh, um, I guess, the quick sort and merge sort is better than the insertion sort, there are cases where uh, the other, like the insertion sort uh, algorithm can actually be faster. And if I'm, and as a, if, if as an application writer, I know that my uh, uh, situation is such that I would prefer uh, one thread over another, it sometimes is very hard for me to, to tell the STL these hints because, I, the, because I'm not allowed to pass uh, a different iterator, iterator category or different uh, tag dispatch uh, versus the, the actual type that, I, that I'm working with, okay? If, uh, if, uh, if I were to write a library using a type dispatch, I might also uh, consider exposing this uh, category as an extra argument with a default value, which is the category of the iterator, uh, and just allow whoever calls uh, uh, my my functions to 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 you know to try and be smart about it and try to uh, bypass basically the default uh, decision, uh, knowing that uh, some categories overlap over each other, and uh, and assuming that maybe uh, an advanced user might want to. Uh, you know, to, to get to, into a different implementation for specific cases. So that's uh, also something that's technically possible for tag dispatch, although not in STL. Okay, so this uh, table is uh, like sort of like an attempt of mine to, to go over a, 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 and summarize the, the different uh, approaches that I uh, talked about uh, so far. It's rather uh, cumbersome and uh, I'm not sure it's 100% accurate, but it helps me uh, think reason about things. You see the first uh, three, uh, uh, line specialization enable if or spine and requires clauses are very, very similar in nature. They're, they're all ways for a, a library writer to, uh, to give some rules and give some constraints about uh, which algorithms can be used with which uh, uh, application uh, uh, classes or application types. It can be used for either turning uh, some specific algorithms on or off and just, and just telling the, uh, the application, hey, you cannot use this algorithm with this type or to choose from a few alternatives. Um, uh, there is no uh, specific way to uh, using these methods to, to actually interact with user, with user code, to plug in uh, 
some user alg functionality in, in line into my uh, algorithm uh, very easily. And in terms of simplicity, uh, I, would, I would consider uh, like specialization and, uh, and requires clauses to be uh, relatively simple, whereas enable if, as we saw, is much more complex. The last three uh, lines are, as mentioned, like more esoteric. Um, tag dispatch approach used in, in STL. Basically, from the way I see it, it gives more power to the application itself. Uh, the library defines several uh, categories. And the application, if they want to use my library or use my algorithm with its own containers, with its own types, uh, basically the, the application can, can choose or has to, to define uh, which category their own uh, classes uh, uh, belong to. Okay, so the application, uh, if, if I have a class, I, I, I basically um, you know, define my, uh, the classes category to be one of uh, the different supported uh, and ones by the library. And, and if I choose correctly, then I get uh, the best performance. If I choose incorrectly, if for, if for some reason, for example, I have a random XS uh, uh, iterator to, uh, to a container that I implemented, and uh, for some reason I, uh, I, I tag it or put, put its category as bidirectional, then STL will not know, and all my algorithms will, will use my uh, iterator as if it's uh, uh, bidirectional and not as if it's random access. Again, tag dispatch doesn't really allow easy uh, uh, injection of user code. Uh, and I would consider its uh, simplicity as, as medium. Custom arguments, such as uh, a comparator for max element, et cetera, is, uh, is not really a way to uh, uh, turn uh, an algorithm on or off uh, or to, to choose from different uh, implementations, but it does allow uh, injecting uh, user code into the algorithm. And uh, as we mentioned, can be done uh, specifically in different call sites. And it's rather simple. And Nebloids are more complex. People need to think about how to use them. And they also, uh, yeah, are re relatively powerful in the sense that uh, the application gets to choose uh, how to interact with, with algorithms. Um, so this table is a little bit, uh, you know, complex and, and convoluted, and I'm not sure I can uh, stand behind uh, each and every cell. But maybe this is a good time to also uh, to again uh, stop a little bit and uh, see if uh, anyone has uh, uh, some uh, some comments or, or questions. Okay, let's move on. Um, <clears throat> so, and, and uh, just uh, uh, so uh, after having uh, you know looked at the, and, and this table, and ingesting it, I should say that this is just the typical uh, use of these uh, methods. But uh, there can be some uh, you know more advanced uses of uh, of uh, these methods that I wrote down here, where one could uh, you know stretch uh, uh, things to the limit and get uh, a little bit uh, of, of a different or more functionality. So, for example. Uh, both in requires clauses and in, in, in uh, Spina, uh, you know, because uh, uh, of the ability to uh, do some uh, specializations, um, one could uh, write their enable if clauses or the requires clauses such that uh, the application can uh, uh, opt in or opt out or uh, move their uh, their classes into or out of a specific uh, concept or a specific enable if uh, uh, expression more easily than, uh, uh, than 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 generally. Okay, so if uh, a library want wants uh, to use Fine and give the application more control, it's, it's, it's possible. And I think I'll show an example in one of the uh, next slides. Similarly, uh, Tag Dispatch also uh, can, can be sometimes used, uh, um, <clears throat> as I mentioned, uh, by uh, such that uh, uh, at the call site, I can give the, uh, the user of my library the ability to override the, the, disp the, the category and not use the default. And if it makes sense, the caller can have uh, a more power in that way. And uh, uh, function arguments and, and, and nibloids, basically because they allow us uh, to inject code, uh, they can uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, let us uh, choose different uh, one of a few algorithms, not at compile time, but at least at runtime. So that was uh, uh, a lot about uh, uh, the way that uh, uh, overload resolution happens and various ways that library uh, writers can interact with uh, with library users and, and let them. Uh, 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 or let the compiler find the best matches between the uh, algorithms and the, the either data structures or, or objects that uh, the libraries are uh, implemented for. So uh, my last uh, section is uh, around the uh, syntax versus uh, semantic constraints. Um, this is another, uh, uh, I think, uh, interesting topic that uh, uh, sometimes isn't uh, uh, delved into uh, deeply enough. 
I think it's, uh, it, it can be tricky and it can be interesting. So to give you a little bit of, uh, uh, of motivation on why this is tricky, these are two examples from the STL standard itself or from, from, from C++ language um, where things uh, uh, were a little bit off when it comes to semantics versus uh, syntax. I don't know if uh, uh, these two bullets uh, immediately ring a bell to everyone or not, um, but uh, I'll try to, to explain what I mean by them. So first of all, uh, is trivially copyable of a STD pair of, of two ints, okay? So if you probably all remember, STD pair of two ints is not much more than a struct containing two ints. It's trivially copyable. Should uh, uh, be true in case uh, uh, such a struct can be just uh, copied using a uh, mem copy and, and such things instead, and not just by calling uh, the, the copy constructor. And uh, unfortunately, um, this uh, type trait is trivially copyable Although we think about it semantically, and we know that STD pair is very, very simple if it's just two ints and uh, can be uh, trivially copyable, it's the actual definition of is trivially copyable is a syntactic one. And the syntax of uh, is trivially copyable um, uh, basically uh, uh, requires uh, that the, the, the STD pair of int int will not, it will have a default uh, uh, assignment operator. And STD pair, unfortunately, doesn't have a default assignment operator. And it is like a, historical, uh, uh, I guess, uh, historical mistake, uh, I guess, all the way uh, back to C++ 98 and the, and the desire to uh, uh, allow pairs uh, that have a uh, reference uh, uh, objects and not just, uh, uh, not just I guess, uh, standard or, or regular objects. Uh, but that uh, made it so that although STD pair uh, of, of two ints uh, is semantically trivially copyable, uh, the, this uh, trait is, is still false for it. And due to uh, ABI uh, compatibility, it's still true uh, today. And it's also true not just for STD pair, but also for STD tuple. So that's, uh, that's a shame. And uh, I, I should also note that uh, um, it's, it's undefined behavior to, uh, uh, to perform a, a specialization on, uh, on type traits in, in the C++ language. So although specialization is legal for any user-defined type doing a, a like, Performing specialization on, on type traits is not something that's a defined behavior. So if, if I know in my code base that, uh, and even from my compiler, that STD pair of, of two ints uh, can be copied with mem copy, with mem copy, and I'm willing to uh, suffer the consequences in case uh, it's not, uh, it won't, like in case mem copy will do uh, bad things, it's still uh, not, uh, not possible for me to, uh, to, to specialize is trivially copyable V and, and turn it into uh, true. Uh, some of you might know that the uh, pair, by the way, is a relatively important uh, uh, struct for uh, various uh, key value containers. And the fact that uh, those key value containers um, do not, uh, uh, you know, they have various optimizations for the case of a uh, trivial copyable stuff and the STD pair just uh, you know, loses a lot of it. The second bullet about uh, the uh, runtime complexity of uh, STD, column, column, list, column, column, size. I don't know if uh, uh, many of you uh, know about uh, that. Uh, uh, old uh, mistake that unfortunately was uh, 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 fixed uh, at a later point in time. So until C++11, uh, the side uh, method for STD list uh, was allowed to be uh, a linear time uh, operation. And only in C++11, they basically uh, decided to uh, make the, the, the language more strict and, uh, and force uh, STD, the size method to be of constant time uh, uh, complexity. I should note that uh, if you use a uh, GCC, then I believe there are some uh, uh, defines that you need to make sure are properly set uh, in order to make sure that uh, it's not running in some ABI compatibility mode that uh, has uh, the size method uh, running at linear uh, speed, um, even with the uh, newer versions of, uh, of uh, C++11 that are not, not as conforming. So this is another case where um, I guess the, the standard itself uh, I guess uh, looked at the, at, the, at the semantics and the syntax of the size method and initially thought that it doesn't really matter that much. Let's just give every container a size method and not think too much about the semantics. Does it have to run constant time or not? And only uh, around C++11, they came around and thought, hey, if we give this is a special method name, if, we, if a, a container or a class has that uh, method name, we want to make sure that it uh, also has the semantic property of running in constant time. And, even if, if we not just stop at C++11 and go even all the way to C++20, you can also see that this uh, uh, 
sort of a glitch and made its way uh, through into uh, the C++ ranges library. <clears throat> and in the ranges library, there's the concept called the sized range. And that concept basically uh, uh, is, a, is a concept for every range that there has a, a, a size method. And, and the, the semantic requirements of uh, the sized range is for that uh, size method to be of a constant time uh, complexity. Okay, and uh, when the, the, this was standardized and when the, uh, they <clears throat> considered that this concept, they also knew that uh, there might be problems with the semantics versus uh, syntax. There might be uh, ranges that, are, that have the size uh, method, but it doesn't meet the semantic requirements. And there was a concern of this uh, undefined behavior uh, getting uh, uh, exposed uh, too much uh, to users. And for that reason, although you, we can't really see it inside the, this uh, concept definition, the ranges library does define this escape hatch. Okay, so there is a, an escape hatch. There is a Boolean called disable sized range. It's equals to false for, for all classes in SDL. And it is allowed, it, it is uh, anyone that uh, implements their own range and the, their range has a size method that doesn't uh, conform to uh, the constant time uh, complexity. They're allowed and they can uh, uh, specialize this uh, context for Boolean and, uh, and in order to disable uh, that uh, concept. I think it's really, really strange that uh, uh, this uh, Boolean isn't just a part, of, uh, a part of the Boolean expression in the concept definition, but it's something that uh, was done and was added to the library. Um, anyone has a question or comment on that? Okay, let's uh, move on and uh, I'll show another example of such an escape hatch, which is uh, um, with the board ranges. Okay, board ranges, another uh, concept related to, uh, to the ranges library. And again, here we have uh, this uh, uh, context for Boolean, not to uh, opt uh, out, but, but to opt in. Uh, and again, enable board range, uh, it defaults to false. And if I write my own range, I want to uh, opt in to, this, to the concept of a board range. I need to uh, specialize and uh, define my, uh, my range as, uh, as, as one that where board range is enabled. In this case, we can see that uh, the, this uh, escape hatch is actually defined as part of the Boolean expression in the concept itself. Whoever looks at the concept itself, they can see that uh, this uh, Boolean appears and, and they know that they will need to opt in in order to uh, belong to this uh, concept, unlike what we had for a, a sized range. Okay, uh, I should also note that this uh, escape hatch trick of uh, basically putting some uh, a Boolean expression inside my uh, concept is basically a must for the, for the reason uh, that uh, concept itself cannot be specialized, okay? So because uh, one cannot specialize the concept of our range, we have to uh, um, go an extra mile and add some uh, other uh, Boolean expression that can, can be specialized just to let the uh, uh, applications or let the library users uh, to opt in and out uh, or basically specialize the concept for their own needs. Okay, uh, questions and comments on the escape patches? Okay, great. Um, so now uh, a, a few more examples of uh, like really special or tricky uh, uses of uh, concepts or constraints uh, that they, you know, we might find uh, interesting to, to talk about and, and, to, and to discuss. So first, uh, here's a, a Herb Sutter talking about the, the complexity of uh, C++ and trying to simplify it by uh, uh, automatically generating implementations for uh, uh, different types of argument passing. But now let's look at templates. Let's go back to a simpler version of the example with just one in parameter, but of a templated type. Turns out you have to write this nest of things. Basically, you're saying, if I should pass by value, so I should pass by value if it's trivially copyable and the size is less than something. Let's just say you can make your own predicate here. Okay, so I didn't expect you to uh, to see, uh, you know, to, to understand everything that uh, Herb was saying, and you can go and uh, look at his talk uh, <clears throat> later on. But uh, what I do want to, what my, what uh, really, uh, you know, took my attention when I saw this is that uh, Herb was basically defining a concept of something that is uh, trivially or is uh, cheaply copied. Okay, and uh, uh, let's, uh, you know, let's uh, try and uh, see if we can look at that again. Well, you know what. So we basically try to define uh, this uh, Boolean expression over a type that should be true if a type is cheaply copied or copyable and uh, uh, false otherwise. 
and uh, used it uh, in his uh, own uh, code. And strangely enough, uh, he didn't use the keyword concept. Okay, he, he basically took uh, and did uh, just a context per Boolean uh, and not a concept uh, to, to define his uh, implementation. And one might think, why, why did he do that? Why didn't he use the word concept? Okay, and I can think of uh, various reasons, and I'm happy to hear what, what your thoughts are. But most and, and foremost, I think that, uh, uh, first of all, it's just there uh, because to let us know that it uh, requires the uh, expressions and press clauses and uh, constraining is, can, is something that can be done and can be useful even without concepts. But secondly, I think it has to do with uh, this notion of uh, specialization. If uh, Herb were to uh, put uh, this uh, expression as, as a concept, it, it wouldn't be possible for someone to, uh, to specialize and to opt in or opt out their class and say, hey, my class doesn't meet your criteria, but I want you to consider it as cheaply copyable or the other way around. So if it, because he chose to do it as a concept for Boolean, it's uh, possible to uh, do specialization on it. Uh, okay, and then another example that uh, also around these uh, same areas, uh, has to do with uh, a concept called the equivalence relation. I don't know if you know it. It's also part of the uh, STL uh, and the, the concepts uh, library. And uh, the interesting thing here is that equivalence relation, by its definition, is just equal to another concept, to STD relation. Okay, so syntactically they are the same. Okay, the only distinction between relation and equivalence relation is semantic. Okay, so again, with with this uh, um, mechanism, the compiler doesn't really have any way. To distinguish between the two, if for some reason uh, you know I, I have uh, uh, an algorithm and I want to uh, to constrain it only to equivalence relation, I don't really have a way to do it. Okay, or I don't have a way really have a way for the uh, compiler to uh, uh, to distinguish between STD relation and, and, and equivalence relation. I can <clears throat> obviously put uh, an equivalence relation in my uh, uh, concept uh, requirements, and that will mean that uh, if anyone that passes a relation uh, that isn't equivalence uh, will basically fall into uh, undefined behavior territory. But again, unfortunately, the, the compiler won't help us in this uh, case. And uh, when I looked at that, uh, it really got me to thinking, why is that different from uh, the other examples uh, uh, that we saw before around the borrowed ranges and around the uh, 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 you know, opting in and opting out? Why didn't they put uh, uh, some uh, like and end clause uh, in, in here in the, inside the equivalence relation and, and some way for uh, uh, anyone there that wants to define their relations to basically opt in or opt out and specify, tell us, hey, I have a relation, but I know that it's equivalence relation or alternatively, I have a uh, relation and I know that it's not an equivalence relation. And uh, <clears throat> for some reason, they chose not to do it uh, uh, for this uh, case and basically uh, increase the risk of undefined behavior if uh, someone uh, doesn't really know uh, what they're doing. Now, after, uh, you know, after talking about uh, this uh, specific case uh, with someone, uh, um, I think over, over some uh, meetup a few months ago, um, I, you know, they, they sent me to, to ask uh, uh, the Slack, uh, uh, Slack room around that uh, talks about concepts. And I, I went to the Slack room and asked uh, uh, this specific question. And uh, one of the uh, responses that I got had to do with the fact that the uh, relations many, many times are actually uh, implemented as, as lambda, okay? And, uh, that, and it might be more tricky to uh, uh, do an opt-in or opt-out for a lambda, to say, uh, to write a lambda and say, this lambda is meant to satisfy the equivalence relation versus this lambda that is meant to uh, satisfy some uh, like strong ordering relation or something like that. So after uh, uh, having uh, heard uh, that, I, I, I thought about it a little bit and. Uh, it, it, it seemed uh, uh, really like a problem, but it didn't look like something that's uh, really impossible to, to deal with. And so uh, I got to thinking, and uh, I think uh, I, it's, it's actually not as difficult as, as uh, uh, to, to do it as, as can otherwise be thought. And here's like a, a small example uh, where, for example, I have uh, like a run with privileges uh, uh, method that uh, I want uh, to, be, uh, uh, to be checked at compile time that. Uh, uh, it, can, it can only uh, <clears throat> execute a critical code. And critical code is some uh, a concept. And I don't really know where, I really don't want to define a critical code right now, but I do want to say that there should be a way, and uh, in, uh, in the next slide we'll see how we can do like a mark critical, uh, um, I guess a, a verb or, 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 or function or constructor or something that, that can accept a lambda. And uh, only once I do that, 
it, I, can be, I can like opt in to this uh, critical code uh, concept. And this way I can like, make sure I get some more uh, uh, compile time checking in the code that uh, someone doesn't uh, by mistake uh, pass in a Lambda that uh, they didn't mark as critical, that they didn't uh, maybe uh, you know, uh, run through more uh, rigorous uh, uh, tests, et cetera, et cetera. And the same uh, can be applied obviously to opt into uh, uh, like other relations uh, and that sort of thing. And the implementation uh, of this uh, mark critical uh, thing isn't uh, uh, too hard actually. It uh, has to do with uh, uh, the trick that I also saw uh, implementing the, the overloaded uh, struct that sometimes used uh, for uh, the visitor pattern or on, on variants. So this is just uh, one uh, uh, example of uh, how, how, how one might do it. Uh, I have uh, a contextual boolean, uh, which is uh, always false, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll set it to true if, I'm, uh, uh, if I derive from some uh, base class. It doesn't really have to be that way, but that's the way I chose it. And then my concept will be uh, equal to that uh, Boolean and mark critical will both derive from that tag and also derive from whatever Lambda I want or whatever callable object I want. And I'll just uh, use the using operator to expose that. And, uh, and this way my uh, mark critical object is uh, both uh, uh, callable and can be used, can be passed uh, as a callable object, but also uh, did the opt in to the uh, critical code uh, concept. So that's another uh, nice uh, uh, trick. And we're coming into uh, to a close uh, of, uh, of the talk. Um, so I have this, uh, these few bullets, uh, I'll, I'll run through them and then I'll be happy to again, open the, uh, the room for, for discussion. So first and foremost, the concepts are great. They're a very good uh, addition to the language. Uh, using uh, requires uh, clauses um, is very, very powerful and uh, you can use them many times even without the uh, uh, concepts. I also have seen some examples even by, uh, um, by Jason of uh, using uh, requires like as part of the uh, if consexpert uh, expressions that really, really um, look, look nice and really um, drive home the point of uh, uh, getting into an if consexpert clause if some code is uh, executable, is legal, it's really, really cool. Um, if I just want to clarify I, that I stole that from Chris Jusiak just for the record here, so. <laughs> okay, great. Um, and uh, if I if I were a library writer, and whenever I write code for others to use, uh, I I try to uh, uh, consider giving uh, uh, power to my users. So I think that uh, uh, escape patches are something that uh, is very uh, um, very powerful and very meaningful. And I I would think that the most uh, concept that I would write will uh, I'll try to think uh, whether it makes sense to to build some ways uh, for. Uh, whoever uses my uh, uh, my library to either opt in or opt out of uh, of things that uh, might uh, seem uh, to be okay uh, uh, syntactically, I would uh, consider ways for doing uh, customization on the call site and not just specifically on the uh, objects themselves. And when it comes to the C++ standard, I really don't really understand why uh, they decided not to allow specialization of concepts. And uh, likewise, the uh, specialization of type traits is something that I think uh, uh, can be tricky for uh, the compilers, implementers, but can be uh, powerful and can, uh, I think sometimes uh, um, really give give power or fix uh, some old uh, mistakes uh, that, that might be uh, might happen from time to time. So uh, that's uh, uh, my talk. I'm uh, really uh, happy to uh, to hear comments and uh, and uh, you know see what uh, any, anything uh, learn from any any of your uh, uh, takeaways. Thank you for that uh, great talk, uh, Roy. But there was a question in the chat window, if you didn't see it, uh, asking if there was any use cases for concepts as uh, ordinary compile time Boolean expressions unrelated to constraints or templates. I, and hmm. um, That's a good question. Basically, as we saw uh, earlier, there are already several different ways to write uh, a Boolean uh, uh, predicates over types. And, and the concept is just one of them. And I think in general, um, if, if, I were, if I wanted to have a Boolean expression, even without a constraint that had to do with uh, a requires clause, uh, well, uh, actually, yeah, we just saw that, uh, that we can do it uh, regardless. I don't know. I think uh, I would usually use a concept if, uh, if I wanted uh, this, the cool uh, 
notation of uh, writing it uh, instead of the word type name in my template or just use auto, etc. Uh, question from Mark. Uh, can you talk about better error messages and compile time performance? You all can just unmute your own Microsoft, your own microphones too. And, uh... <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, I'm not the expert on that, but basically I, I can say that uh, uh, error messages are much, much nicer because uh, uh, without concepts, uh, what you usually see is uh, the compiler basically uh, going deep inside the library code to, and to find the first place where uh, uh, some uh, assumption about the, the application classes uh, breaks. And it gives you uh, like a very, very uh, uh, no, no detailed uh, uh, message about some very, very obs obscure, usually part of the code that's, uh, uh, that you as a library user shouldn't be aware of. Whereas uh, when it comes to concepts, uh, there's a very like a basic check and the concept is sort of like part of the signature. It should be very easy for one to know, hey, what, which uh, specific uh, uh, requirement uh, my uh, object doesn't uh, deal with. I could say that uh, even without the uh, concepts, one might uh, use uh, like static asserts inside their libraries in order to try and catch things uh, earlier, but the uh, concepts error messages are basically very, very uh, easy to, to deal with in, in, that, uh, in that sense. There are all, I think there are also uh, uh, various knobs that you can tweak regard with your uh, compiler uh, uh, flags in order to, uh, you know, to, to, to uh, around the, the verbosity of, of those error messages. And when it comes to uh, uh, compilation speeds, I also know that it's much faster, but I don't, I can't really give any details as to uh, how or why, so. Thank you. Yeah. So I have, I have a question, Roy. Um, is this talk submitted to C++ now? <laughs> I'm, I'm very much uh, uh, planning to, to submit it, yeah. That's excellent to hear. I kind of already knew the answer, but um, <laughs> that, but that was an even better answer than I knew. Right? No, um, I have to tell you, by the way, that uh, you know it was obviously before I, I wrote the slides. But uh, like, um, when was it? Like six months back, I tried to uh, write a sort of outline for this and submitted it uh, to to CppCon, and and I was actually denied. So I think maybe my wording needs uh, some work on. But uh, I'll, I'll try to uh, to work on that. Yeah, I, I tell people don't be uh, don't be discouraged if a talk you submit is uh, is not accepted because for for one thing it may have just been you didn't get a great set of reviewers can't really you know we try to get good reviewers can't control for that but also I'd like to think that the quality of our talks is high enough that um, I, I know for a fact that we say no to a lot of good talks um, yeah and and you know so don't be discouraged uh, just. Uh, give us another chance and uh, try again. That's all I can say. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, ha having seen uh, the, the the actual uh, talks that uh, that did uh, make it into CppCon, I'm very very impressed. And uh, definitely, uh, you know, being part of that crowd is uh, is an honor. Uh, which I will even do, so. <laughs> Great. Any more comments or thoughts? Great. So thank you very much, uh, everyone. This has been a really uh, blast. Um, yeah, I, I don't think we have any, any more time, but I, I tried, if, if you like, uh, another like point to maybe like to open the floor around has to do with uh, Herb Sutter's uh, thing on the, on argument passing. I wonder what, what you think about it. And, uh, you know, one, one, you know, point that really stuck out, uh, uh, for me when I heard about it is, and I think he mentioned it a little bit, is the, uh, around the, the differences in semantics between, uh, passing by value and passing by const reference. Where it seems that uh, throughout the um, Herb's talk, he was like glossing over it and basically uh, tried to, uh, uh, you know, to, to claim that uh, passing by const reference or passing by value is many times interchangeable. It's just a matter of uh, uh, how how cheap or, or expensive the copy operation is. But in fact, uh, there are issues related to aliasing, etc., uh, where uh, um, semantics are really, really uh, incorrect. And, uh, it if, if I can say, I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. When he first gave that talk, I was like, oh, wow, this is wonderful. I still think it's wonderful. But I started thinking about it later, and I realized, wait a minute. If you pass by value, um, then that value, of course, can't change. But if you pass by const reference, it's possible that the const reference is actually a reference to something whose value is changing because of something you're doing, or maybe because of a multi-threaded thing or something like that. So the semantics actually, it, 
the semantics are different. And wow. um, I, I, that's, that's a really, um, I think that could be a nasty trap. And I think this, the, it shouldn't be glossed over. Instead, we should blow it up and take a close look at it and say, is there a way to win here? Is, is there a way that we can say um, that, uh, that we can achieve what, what he wants to achieve, which I love. I mean, to someone who has to explain how to pass parameters in C++, I mean, this was just a wonderful thing to just say what your intent is and let the compiler figure it out. Uh, but this is a nasty little thing where what your intent is, is, is it's not clear enough to say, just to say this is an input parameter. It's, it's not clear what you mean by that. And um, Yeah, I, I definitely agree. And uh, yeah, on, on that note, by the way, uh, I don't know if it's really much of interesting, but yeah, I guess many of you know the um, the erase remove idiom um, of, uh, of you know how to uh, to, to delete uh, objects uh, by, by predicate from from a container where you have to call remove and then also do the erase. So this uh, also yeah. So so this idiom actually has uh, something to do with uh, um, something to do with. Uh, uh, aliasing as well. I'm not sure if, if people really are aware of it. So this is like the code for uh, um, th that one would want to do to, in order to erase a, a specific, like the maximum element from a container that has, a, uh, that might have a, a repetitions. Okay, so perhaps in cases where um, I want to uh, remove or do like an erase remove of the max element, this code is actually uh, broken. Okay, because the uh, max element will return the uh, uh, just uh, obviously an iterator, and the star operator will get it through into a, um, well, actually, well, yeah, with, with a, with a decal type, colon, colon, value type, th this is the fix, actually, yeah. So what I'm trying to say is that the STD remove basically uh, it works by, takes an argument by, uh, uh, it's, it's element by, by reference, by const reference, and it will, and then it goes and uh, shuffles things around inside the, the container. And if I were to copy uh, the element into like, another value type, I, I'm, I would be, uh, uh, I guess, I would be a miss. So I hope, I hope this is, uh, yeah, I hope this example resonates with people. I don't know. Mm -hmm. 